Hello everyone, in this video I'll actually be trying to write some code for the Convolutional Neural Network project. Uh, I may not be able to write a lot, but that's always a start. And hopefully this way you can also process all the information without feeling too overwhelmed. So here we go. Uh, I'll be using Qt Creator as my IDE. You can use any editor or IDE you like. Uh, shouldn't matter that much. So let's go ahead and create a project which is going to be a plain C++ application in this case. I'm going to call it NewNet Math. This is the name I've come up with because uh, I like for it to be more inclusive and expandable over time. So hopefully you can make that work. Uh, I'll be using CMake as my build system. Uh, which should make the project kind of more universal um, or more portable uh, considering how popular CMake is and actually I think the people at Qt they're moving away from uh, QMake over to CMake so this is uh, the recommended approach anyway uh, I think this is basically the same, so the same kit so I'll, as you can see, I'll be using GCC as my compiler. Haven't really tested it with GCC before, but hopefully we can get through it without any major problems. So let's go ahead and click next. I'm not really adding it to any version control for now. I think I'll just create a repository. Um, and probably with different branches that will correspond to the different stages of this tutorial or this project so we can kind of track our progress so let's go ahead and click finish we just have a basic hello world example here so let's just try to run it as you can see it runs just fine so let's close this and Maybe let's just add a file here, which is going to be a header file. So I'm going to call it pch.h. And this file will be, will basically store pre-compiled he headers or references to headers that should be pre-compiled. So let's add it here and actually if you change it to at least 3.16 then you can use something like target precompile headers I'm gonna copy the name of the project here so let's say private and just the name of this file Okay, so we should be good to go for now and uh, let's uh, go ahead into this and step into this file this may be a bit redundant we can say I'm gonna use the pragma ones directive for those compilers that support it over here I'm gonna say if def C plus plus and and if to basically any uh, references to or, or any includes that uh, are uh, C plus plus headers will go in between. Okay, so for now we're not really separating um, those two like into a, a different location or a different project. I'm gonna treat it as one project for now. So let's just add an actual file that we'll be working on. I'm gonna call it an array. And this is 
the base for our container classes, uh, which are a vector, which is like a 1D container, then you have a matrix, which is like a 2D container, and finally a volume, which represents a 3D container or a stack of matrices. So let's go to the array and copy it over here. So let's uh, define a namespace, namespace NNM for uh, is that an acronym for Nuned Math? And now you're going to create a template class. So you're going to say template type name T class array. Um, So first of all, we're going to say uh, static. We we want to accept only floating point data types. So we're going to say static assert is floating point value. We're going to say do not going to say incorrect data type so we need to add one header here to include type traits in order for it to work Okay, so now it's working. Okay, so let's uh, write some basic stuff here. We're gonna have maybe like two protected members. So first, uh, you're gonna have a number of elements. And then the actual data, the pointer to the actual data. Okay, so maybe a basic constructor. Mm. So let's initialize those members. So you can say number of elements is zero. If it's zero, then this will be null pointer. So let's copy this and let's create. Another constructor that actually would take the number of elements here. So I'm just going to say number of elements. I'm going to put it here. And remove this. And now, if number of elements greater than zero, I'm going to say MP data reinterpret cast I cast it to that pointer so like this so malloc I'm gonna say 
number of elements times size of t. So we don't have that. Let's go here. Include c standard lib. Okay, otherwise, it's going to say null pointer. Yeah, and something that we may also need is a, a copy constructor. So const array other. So if other first of all maybe let's initialize number of elements so if other data is not equal to null pointer then you can copy this for the most part, uh, except that we're going to say number of elements. Uh, so we're going to copy uh, again I have to add uh, I believe it's C string where it resides now yeah, so you're gonna say MP data other MP data and number of elements Size of um, actually, you may create like a method for that. So let's say size t get size in bytes. And this is what we would be returning here. So return this. So here we can use this. So else you'll say data equals no pointer. Right, so we have something like this so far. Mm, there we are. 
so we're gonna say virtual we're gonna create a virtual destructor just to make sure we don't leak any memory we're gonna say if m p data is not null I'm going to say std free and let's just say no pointer just to be sure then I'm telling you if you mess up with memory management then you're going to feel it soon enough uh, once you start processing a lot of data because then it would just keep growing uh, and this is basically this copy constructor will help us not to lose uh, data when we uh, go out of scope for example when we exit a function or when we return an object from from a function or from some method rather okay so maybe let's just add some more methods maybe I have is null mm. return we're gonna check it against the uh, null pointer And maybe something to access the data, the underlying data. So you can see. Return empty data. And maybe also the constant version. Okay, so looks uh, pretty good so far. Maybe let's just um, try to see if it kind of works. Okay, let's see. So I have to include array in this case. Mm. Okay, private, so let's make it public. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. By default, it's private. Try to run this. Throws no errors, so I guess it's working even though it's this is the very beginning haven't really done much yet probably here over here in this array class we'll be adding functions like uh, that are common to all those containers so for example something that applies like a transformation element wise or things of that nature so something that has to process all the elements one by one regardless of the shape of the container whether it's 1d 2d or 3d we'll, we'll go here so this may change and evolve over time but hopefully this is good for for starters and we can go further from here so i think this is it for now so hopefully if you like this video you can subscribe to my channel hit the like button share it and hopefully see you next time bye